We bless you, Father. Hallelujah. Worship you. Thank you, God. All right, here we are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's Sunday, the 21st of May in the year 2023, and we are in our, how many session now? I don't know. <laughs> you know, maybe fourth session um, of the waiting room for this year. And I am so excited because I, I truly believe the hand of the Lord is guiding us step by step through this year's waiting room. And I, I feel that this, this year's waiting room looks different to last year's. And last year's looked different to the year before. So it's like only God, this, this way of saying, if you're going to be creative, I am going to show you that it doesn't need to be even repetitive. It's going to be, it's going to look different. And so we mm -hmm. thank the Lord for, for that for real. So we want to encourage you who are on Facebook watching us um, to engage with us, to help us make others um, experience this, other people experience this. So share, share um, the broadcast. And those of us who are here on, on Zoom as well, if you have another device and you're able to share it, go ahead and share so that we have more people in the room. Hallelujah. Again, if you're here on Zoom, we invite you to be fully present, fully engaged so that we can have the interaction, all right? Mm -hmm. um, the still pictures, I wanna remind us are for with the morning uh, when it's too early, perhaps to show up. But once we're here, as you come on to Zoom, uh, we invite you to show us your beautiful faces. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. yeah. We bless yeah. the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yeah. I like that. Oh, what did we learn on Friday? How, how are we going to praise the Lord? <laughs> Let's see. Just okay. in case Cynthia sees this. Come on, Molly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Amen. Y'all right. <laughs> right. right. don't be doing any wrong thing there, right? Because I'm not going to take Amen it. Amen is the gavel. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So Father, thank you for your, your, you being the creator that you are and for you fashioning and forming us in your own likeness. And because we are in your likeness and in your image, God, we reflect back to you and to the earth, the creativity that you put into us. Hallelujah. Amen. So God, Hallelujah. every time we express creativity, we express in divinity. Hallelujah. Mm. Somebody may Thank want to Lord just confess Jesus. that. And every time Hallelujah. I express creativity, I am expressing divinity. Mm. Hallelujah. Express every time I put that divinity. work of art out mm. there, every time I enjoy nature and mm. creation and what somebody else does and what I do, I am seeing the expression of creativity. And so that's what the waiting room is inviting you to walk in, that you can engage with God, worship, pray, meditate, reflect, um, fellowship with others in a creative way. I mean, we will no longer be bored <laughs> praying. <laughs> we will no longer be, be, be struggling with how to pray, what to say next. No, you don't have to just use words, use pictures, Hallelujah. use objects, yeah. use yeah. what you're seeing all around you. So before we go any further, I am going to invite the ones who would be on Zoom with me right now, this is this is on the spot for me. So you didn't get any chance to prepare, any chance to rehearse. All right, come work with me. You're gonna look around you and find something, one thing that you can see and you're gonna make it a quick sentence prayer or two sentences. So I am privileged because I have some, you know, French doors that makes me see the backyard and I'm seeing trees, I'm seeing stuff outdoors, but I'm also seeing indoors. I don't know what you can see, but quickly you're going to find something that your eyes have landed upon because you can see it and you're going to turn what you've just seen into prayer. One sentence, no more than two quickly. Who wants to go first? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So father, I thank you that you are a God who keeps your promises. And so because of that, we will not give up on what you have said. What you saw. 
I have a plaque facing me that's family rules and the first rules are never give up and keep your promises. Okay, so we didn't know that. So we have to actually say what we're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so thank you for that. Anybody else? Say what you're seeing and then pray. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a hanger that I have in the house named Joy. Okay. So Father, I pray today that we will maintain the joy that comes with serving you and seeking your face. Amen. Wow, I love it. I love it. Anybody else? Yeah. I can see a sewing machine. And so, Father, I thank you for um, stitching me together so beautifully. And Ooh. all my sisters and all everybody that's joining us on Facebook, I thank you. I come with a prayer of thanksgiving for their lives. And I pray, Lord, for any tear, anything that's fractured, that you will stitch together, put together seamlessly, and there'll be no scars, no sign of any injury. Ooh. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, wow. Lord, I receive that. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Wow, how powerful. Go, keep going, keep going. Okay, I'm seeing a fan. So, Father, we thank you, my God, that you are uh, you are the breath, my God, as you, your wind flows through us, my God. We ask, my God, that you continue to cover us, my God. Let your cooling breeze flow through this room now and your anointing be upon us in Jesus' name. I Amen. love it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm, I am seeing, I'm seeing family. So, Father, I thank you for the privilege of my nieces and my nephews and my brother and friends. And I thank you for this family of ladies that you have enjoined my heart unto. We ask God that you would bless us and make us blessings in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. I'm seeing the materials that I tutor children with in this same spot. So Father God, I give you praise for the opportunity that I have had and will continue to have, especially in this time of my life when I have a purpose, inspiring children, and especially those with special needs. It is because of you and your leading that this has come to pass. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Wow. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you, Jesus. So there are lights all around me. Lights, I've turned on lights, but lights coming through the, the windows, light coming through the doors, but there's also a ring light over me. Mm -hmm. And last year, this time, I was really challenged with my vision. I couldn't allow this kind of light directly into my eyes. And some of you remember there were times I was off camera because too long was the exposure to the light was painful. There's still a little sensitivity, but I thank God today, a year later that I can drive in the night, a year later I can stand and tolerate light. And so I thank you for light coming through. And God, you said in your word that when our eyes are flooded with light then we can see. So we thank you for the revelation that is coming because your light is coming through our eyes and we're no longer longer walking in darkness, but we're walking in the light in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody give God praise in this room. You see how we can pray creatively? You see how we can use our senses and connect with God? You see how it doesn't have to be boring? You see how it doesn't have to be stale? And you see how we can invite people who say, I don't know how to pray or teach children how to pray. Just let them look at colors. Let them pray accordingly. Look at objects. Pray accordingly. And I'm telling you, just as you were inspired just now, now yeah. I believe we can use this. If you lead a group, if you are host, you facilitate a group, a prayer group, please use some of the things you're learning in the prayer, in the prayer, in the waiting room, waiting right? Room. To, yeah. uh, to help you. It's a prayer room, waiting room, right? Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the Zoom room, we have Sister Luana from Barbados, uh, Minister Moline from London. Sister Helen from Kissimmee, uh, Minister Pope from Trinidad, Sister Eller from Trinidad, Sister Dawn from New York, and Pastor Heather from New York. And I am here, your host from Kissimmee, Florida. And we are so glad to be in the rating room 2023. Tonight, mm -hmm. our topic is visualization. The supernatural starts with what we see and what we say. The Amen. supernatural starts with what we see and what we say. And so I praise God because I believe <clears throat> that God is going to cause his people to be 
awakened or to be reawakened, hallelujah, to how he wants us to walk supernaturally. This year, our focus is manifestation. Our theme is manifestation from uh, the waiting room to the birthing room. Birthing room. From, from carrying something that is concealed and invisible to manifesting something that is visible and tangible. I believe God wants us to take from the, 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 the invisible realm, hallelujah, and bring it into the, the natural realm but through prayer, through visualization, through, through prophecy, through calling things as they are, even though they're not yet, right? Because yeah. that is the power of faith and the power of us decreeing and declare it according to God's word. It's not just, I say what I want to say when I want to say it. I believe it has to be based in, on relationship. It has to be based on scripture. It has to be based on revelation that God gives you for your situation. So you want to pray and say, God, okay, tell me your thoughts for where I am now. Let me know what, what is exactly on your heart for this season of my life, for this situation I'm facing. And when God speaks to you, that's revelation. When God gives you the specific, that is revelation for your situation. We don't just want to stamp a scripture because it's in the Bible and it's, it hasn't come to you as revelation. So there's a difference. So tonight you are going to be um, enlightened. Um, tonight you're going to be provoked tonight. You're going to be stirred. And I want you to grab pen and paper, markers, crayons, Bibles, have all your materials ready for when you are inspired to write something that has been happening here in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. And so, um, again, all of us are creative, different levels based on how God wants us to serve his purpose in the earth realm. So never discount how you do what you do and say, I can do this. No, we're not going to use that anymore. Right? We're going to just say, Lord, here are my five loaves and two fishes. You breathe on them. And Lord, we thank you for your breath and your life flowing through them. All right. Our facilitator tonight is my darling sister that I want you to know something about. That you need to know that um, Heather is gifted on many levels. <laughs> Her full name is Ruth Heather Baisden Crutch. She's an educator. She's a writer. She's a wife. She's a mother. She's an integrative wellness coach and transformational speaker. I'm talking about my sister. Have you met her? She was born to pastors Michael and Esther Baisden, and she has come to view ministry as the family business. I love it. She immigrated to the U.S. in 1994, where she attended and graduated from Nyack College with a B.S. in child education and a minor in psychology. There she also met and wed her husband and partner in life and ministry, Prophet Christopher Crutch. Have you met him? If you haven't met him, you need to meet him. He is for real a prophet. <laughs> Together, they have expressed their apostolic passion to help strengthen churches in reaching their kingdom assignments. Currently, they serve as part of the leadership team of Kingdom Life Ministries International in Brooklyn, where Dr. Peter Bonadie is their shepherd. Pastor Heather enjoy a fruitful 10-year administrative career in admissions at her alma mater, and during that time, commence a master's in counseling. Due to a fervent passion, passion for integrative health and wellness, she diverted and added to her professional toolbox certification in integrative health coaching. You know who to call. Heather's <laughs> professional journey as an educator has included elementary school, faith-based educational initiatives, and most importantly, establishing Sterling Academy as directed by the Lord to home educate her daughter's Symphony and Willow. Um, Symphony is 18 years old and Willow is 13, 14. <laughs> well, yeah, oh my gosh. So we need to edit this. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> wow. I got chills just now because I didn't know that you had named it Sterling's Academy. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sterling is uh, the daughter that's in heaven, and I met her once, but she's etched in my heart forever. Pastor Heather has served the body of Christ in multiple capacities locally and abroad, including the role of worship pastor, 
overseeing sing the singles with her husband, youth ministry, Christian education, and intercession. She's most passionate about writing, prophetic worship, intercession, and offering spiritual direction and mentorship, mentoring to women, especially surrounding parenting and the integration of spirituality with physical and emotional health. She is qualified, I promise you. Of all these opportunities, getting to be the mother to her outstanding daughters is her greatest joy and accomplishment. Yes, please welcome my sister, my chosen sister, my given sister, um, who the Lord has blessed me with for 40 years almost. Uh-huh. For as long as I had gone to WIS, I went to WIS in 1983. My God, Heather was 12. Wow. I was 18 or 20, 20. I was going on 20 actually. Mm -hmm. And um, mom would go to the islands because she was the uh, women's ministries director. director. And my friend Beverly and I were asked to stay at the home with Heather and her brother. And Heather decided, you are my real sister. You knew this. <laughs> <laughs> and I still remember, Heather, how it, it looked like there was a gap. And mom invited me to speak at a women's conference in 1992. And I, I felt like this is what my sister did. She's like, I don't know where you were, but this time you weren't going nowhere again. Oh. And, and I still remember that same year, I think you went to England and you came to Florida, mm -hmm. spent some time here in Florida. And the, the history that we've built since has been marvelous. Um, you and I talk about visualization all the time. Heather, because I feel like it is an aspect of how we should engage with God, how mm -hmm. we should pray that we have literally sacrificed to the New Agers, sacrificed to the Middle Eastern uh, religions. Now, you need to know whatever God creates, the enemy would seek to corrupt. Mm, and so good. from the get-go, we want to say, we are calling us back to what God himself calls us to. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I, I wonder what was he calling um, a Adam to do in Genesis when he said to Adam, Adam, look at look around, just as I told you just now to look around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see all the animals? God hadn't named one animal. No. God hadn't named one of them. And Adam was told, look around and you're going to name them. Now, the name speaks to the identity, to the function. Ooh, the name is saying something about what this animal is supposed to do. Where did Adam get that from? How was Adam able to look at kangaroo and say, you're kangaroo, you're mm -hmm. elephant, you're giraffe, mm -hmm. you're butterfly, you're bird. Come on, listen, you're going to start naming things. You're going to start identifying things. You are going to start calling things mm -hmm. as they need to be. As they need to be. Oh, Lord, I know I said something that somebody's going to get tomorrow when you have breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Because that just went <laughs> over your head. <laughs> as they need to be. As they need to be. Because yeah. right now, many of us are calling things as they are. Correct. And some of what we're calling as they are needs to be like, no, that's not what God is saying. So we're going to call things as they need to be by the power of the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. So, my dearest sister, start, start driving the car for me, please, because I'm too excited here. Let me put my seatbelt and relax I, a little th bit. I think we got down the road already. <laughs> <laughs> we have already, and you know what? I'm going to encourage you to record. I know this is Facebook. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, it's on Facebook Live. So, so we're good. It, we're good. We're good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. And, and I just want to again reiterate that those of you who are coming in via Zoom, it's important that you're showing your faces. Mm -hmm. We don't want any blank screens and your full name on the screen. If you can do that, then you're going to have to settle for watching on Facebook because we want to see you 
fully know. engaged here on their screen. So thank you for that. All right, sis. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Apostle Valentine, my chosen and given sister. I want to give honor to you in this space um, as we continue driving this. Well, let's say we're on the five train. We'll use some New York language. That's the fast train. So I want you to look at my, my screen. My background today is actually a luxury birthing suite because we are... Uh, in the birthing room, right? So this is what a luxury suite looks like. Those of you who still plan to have children, maybe you can hook yourself up with one of these. But in addition to that, I, I, I may look like I'm underdressed, but I am appropriately clad because I don't know if you can see my t-shirt. Stay right there. Oh yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right, my t-shirt says manifest. Clear or obvious to the eye or mind. There you go. Clear or obvious to the eye, which means it's tangible, it's visible, but mm -hmm. it also says obvious to the mind, which is where we're going this evening. So if it's obvious to the mind, it means that we are, and I'm going to throw some words out. Remember, it's interactive this evening. It means that we have already been imagining it we have already been visualizing the it before it comes into being. Can I say that again? I want just to start kind of using that language yeah. that before something can be manifest into the natural, we have to have the ability to conceive it with our minds, to be able to see ourselves doing it, being it, having it. And then we need to be able to see it before it can come to pass. That's kind of where we want to channel our um, attention, our respect for what God wants to say to us in this room this evening. And I want those of you who have your phones, kind of grab them. We'll have some verses. Whoever gets them first will be able to kind of read out. Um, I'll tell you the text that they're from. So again, we're talking about visualization, the supernatural starts with what we see and with what we say, with what we see and with what we say. I want um, Apostle, maybe you can grab this for us, Did the Genesis 15, five passage, Genesis 15, five, and I would love it from the voice. How many of you are familiar with Abraham? Have you yes. heard about Abraham? Uh -huh. yes. And, we, and we, we, under, we, we know Abraham's story, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, can we do some empathic work and kind of put yourself in Abraham's shoe where God is giving him this word. He's got this prophetic word that he has to wait to see come to pass, like mm -hmm. many of us. Mm -hmm. And then Abraham is in this waiting room, this waiting period, and he mm -hmm. starts to get a little antsy like some of us. And then God comes to him in Genesis 15, 5. Apostle, could you tell us what Genesis 15, 5 says in the voice, please? In the voice. the voice, okay, in the voice, in the voice. Let me grab it. I had it in the expanded Bible. Let me get the voice, the voice, the voice, the voice. Um, Genesis 15, 5. God took him outside to show him something. Could you say that again? To do what? God took him outside to show him something. Mm -hmm. Look up at the stars and try to count them all, if you can. There are too many to count. Your descendants will be as many as the stars. Ooh. My goodness. Hallelujah. Now, just from the fourth verse, I got revelation, fourth word, I got revelation. God took him outside. So many of us are used to vision boards. Uh, mm -hmm. People do vision boards, right? At the beginning of the year, many of you may have done so, maybe a vision album. And I would like to suggest to us that vision boarding was God's idea to begin with. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Genesis 15, five is telling us that Abraham is in the waiting period he is needing something to stimulate him, to encourage him, to give him some more energy to continue 
through the waiting to the birthing. And God says, you know what? You need something to look at. You need to use your eyes and you, you need to use your mind to visualize what I have said is to be. Remember, Apostle just said we need to start calling things as they need to be. So God is saying, Abraham, this is what you're experiencing is not what I said. But lest you get discouraged, I want to give you something to look at. So he takes him outside yes. and he says, and I love how the voice says it. He takes him outside to show him something. In other words, God wanted Abraham's sense of sight to be engaged in the process of faith. Okay, can we agree with that? Yes. Yeah, that God wants to engage your sight. Now, when we say sight this evening, we mean actual physical sight and our sight. Uh, how can we put that? mentally our imagination god wants to engage our sight in the process of going from the waiting room to the birthing room from waiting to manifestation so god takes him outside to show him something something that is a representation of what god has promised so i want us to be thinking about this evening what are some of those things that you're believing in this 10 day period, you're going to start seeing crowning, right? That's what happens when the baby is coming out and we're expecting to see what are those things. Do you have an image in your eyes, in front of your eyes, or do you have an image in your mind? Sister Arlene, do you have an image? What God has promised, what you're believing for, what you're looking to see, manifest, be made obvious. Do you have an image, Sister Helen? Do you have a picture? A physical picture and a picture in your mind. Because the fact of the matter is, if we can't see it, we can't become it. <laughs> right? If we can't see it, we can't have it. Or maybe when it comes, we won't recognize it because we have not taken the time to develop a picture internally of what God has said he has promised us. Does that make sense to us this evening? I, I want us to really flow with this because I believe it is such a missing link for many of us as believers because as apostles said, what God has orchestrated in the earth to be a key to our birthing has been hijacked by the enemy and exploited by the secular world. And we've become kind of nervous about it where God is saying, listen, this is a key. This is a key. I took Abraham outside to show him something that was a representation of what I promised. What does that do for us? It means that every time you look at that, maybe it's a house, right? It's a five bedroom house with two garage and a lawn and there is a willow tree standing. When you're looking at that picture, you begin to internalize, this is my house. God has promised me this. Maybe it's your health. What about a picture of the last time you looked your healthiest? You felt your best. As you have that picture up, that becomes something that can be your outside. Because sometimes when we spend so much time inside with a situation that hasn't changed, we become depleted of our faith we begin to lose hope that what god has said will come to pass are we resonating this evening yes yes yeah yeah apostle and and minister graves as anything comes up please feel free to jump in and if there are others but i want us to begin there and, and i wonder if for a moment we can pause and i want you to take into your mind's eye Something that you are believing to see manifest as we are uh, going from the waiting room to the birthing room, as we're walking through these 10 days, because it would be a disservice to the time, to the sacrifice, if we just say this was a really great time with wonderful prayer and creative stuff. No, I want to see some things. Hallelujah. And so I want us to take a moment. Maybe you know what that thing is. You know what you need to go outside for God to show you 
a representation? Do you have a picture of it in your mind? How about we pause for a minute and I want you to think, what is, what is it going to look like when that thing manifests? What is it going to feel like when it manifests? Can you touch it? Can you feel it? What is it going to look like? If you have crayons, you have markers, you have paper, maybe you want to write it. Maybe there are some words. Maybe there is an emotion that you would have when this thing manifests. Maybe it's exuberance, joy, relief. Let's take a moment. Those of you who are with us on Facebook, we want to engage in this. Let's take a moment here. God has taken us outside. He wants us to look up. He wants us to begin to give ourselves permission to visualize what manifestation will look like. We'll take a couple moments for that. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Hallelujah. Now I want to challenge us. Is there anybody who would like to share what you wrote, what you drew? I see Minister Greaves smiling. I'm I'm still working. <laughs> but I um uh, Minister Heather, I I thought about when we were speaking, I thought about um, the saying, seeing is believing, hmm. and how normally that's taken as almost like, not ye of little faith, because it's kind of a, a dichotomy. Uh, I don't know if that's the right word. You're the wordsmith, but it's one of those, a bit like what we said in, when we started this week. Um, um, or is it, no, we we're talking about something else, matters, and the word matters has its, you know, the dual, dual ways we can look at that. So that's coming later in the week. So I won't talk about that now. But I looked at the saying, seeing is believing, and um, there's a dictionary, um, something's writ written here. This saying contains an important spiritual truth. Seeing is believing. In the physical world, seeing comes prior to believing, but in the spiritual world, believing often precedes knowing, just as faith precedes the miracle. Believing can give us eyes to see and ears to hear, enabling us to understand and know. So again, Abraham being taken outside, come on out and I'm going to show you something. And so I, I, that really resonated with me in that, yes, it's not a case of doubting in that respect, but that seeing and believing in our mind's eye and, as you said, um, visualizing it, what it can be and become. And um, I, yeah, I'm just loving what's going on there. So yeah, I'm just sketching somebody wearing a pair of glasses. We'll look at that in a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anybody else who connects with what we're sharing and would like to share? All right, we'll hold that. Perhaps we'll come later on. So that was our Genesis 15, 5. And what we want to anchor in the truth there is that God is comfortable 
<laughs> with you visualizing having a picture in your mind and having a picture to see of what he has said concerning you, what he wants birth out of your life. All right, so let's jump to another passage of scripture. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Genesis 11, verse 6. Genesis 11, verse 6 in the Amplified. Um, whoever gets that, I want you to hold on to it. I want you to hold on to that because I want somebody, before we get to that, uh, someone find Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. Actually, I'll, I'll go to Numbers and someone can grab Genesis 11. So Numbers 13, 33, I'm going to read that from the Contemporary English Bible. Mm -hmm. We're very familiar with this. We, we, we're familiar with the Tower of Babel. Yes. And I want to read verse 33, part B. And it says, I'm sorry, not the Tower of Babel. Here we're, we're talking about um, when uh, the Israelites sent, when spies were sent to check the land out, right? So the promised land. And I want you to hear this. Numbers 13, 33 in the, in the contemporary says, we saw ourselves as grasshoppers mm. and that's how we appeared to them. This is talking about the giants in the land. Mm -hmm. Let's listen again to the language. We saw, everybody say saw, we saw, we saw. We saw. Mm -hmm. ourselves as grasshoppers yes. and that's how we appeared to them wow. so again here is god promising them what canaan promising them giving them a promise he's saying can you think about what that would look like i want to give you an image of what that would look like i want you to go check out what is yours mm. And here are, the, here are those who go in first and they say, listen, uh, we're looking like grasshoppers. Again, you see the context of the eye. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly how those who view them saw them. Now, mm -hmm. if we want to contextualize that, because I am a clinician, I'm going to use this language, self-image. Mm -hmm. They saw themselves Mm -hmm. as grasshoppers and because that's how they saw themselves everybody else around so them saw way. them that way mm -hmm. how are you seeing yourself what are you seeing because god may be saying i have this for you this is what needs to come out of your life i have books in you i have songs for you to write I have uh, environments for you to invade and you might be looking at that and you might be seeing yourself as a grasshopper and guess what? Mm -hmm. That's how that environment is viewing you. Mm -hmm. So, but Pastor Heather, can I ask a question there? So that, what you've just read, it says they, so that's the multitude. How on earth could everybody have that same vision? Did it come first by somebody uttering it? Because they weren't looking in, in a mirror and seeing themselves. So that was their self-concept. That's yeah. how they perceive themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, you said something so powerful because if, uh, <laughs> if I am in an environment, and we talk a lot in SVM about environment mattering, right? Mm -hmm. If I am in an environment that confirms either positively or negatively, how I am seeing a situation or seeing myself, eventually that's going to become pervasive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is why who we are attached to matters. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is why who is in the birthing room matters. Mm -hmm. Because as we see ourselves and what we project from what we self, our image of ourselves, that's how others will perceive us. Mm -hmm. And so again, I believe this evening, saints, brothers and sisters, birthers, 
Yeah. Intercessors, I believe God wants to deal with our sight. Mm -hmm. God wants to deal with our sight. God wants to mm -hmm. adjust our sight. God wants to correct our vision. Yes. Our vision of ourselves, our vision of what he has said. Perhaps some of us, we are blind. We're not even seeing. We're not even able to see. We're saying, how on earth is this going to happen? I, mm -hmm. How is this going to be? And God is saying, I want your vision corrected. Maybe you, you are seeing some, but maybe you're suffering from myopia this evening. Yeah. Some of us are wearing glasses because of that. We're short-sighted. Mm -hmm. We are short-sighted. Mm -hmm. And God wants to correct our vision. Mm -hmm. Some of us, I believe, are seeing things microscopically. And God is saying, mm -hmm. I have called you to so much more. Mm -hmm. And you are seeing things so microscopically. God wants to attend to our vision. Mm -hmm. God wants to attend to our vision. Apostle, I'm going to ask you if we can pray into that before we move on. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I feel and sense that the Lord would want to deal with um, areas that have um, done damage, as it were, to our ability to see correctly. If I have had... season after season of hope deferred. If I have prayed my best prayers, mm -hmm. but I'm, I've come up empty handed, if I've stood in faith and proclaimed and prophesied, and yet I am not seeing, after a while, after a while, I believe not even consciously, we begin to, to settle for not even believing that we would see what we are praying for. After a while, I believe we can become so disillusioned even. Mm -hmm. Are you all hearing me? So disillusioned that we still, we're still in church, we're still preaching and singing and praying and prophesying, but not in faith and not with faith, not with conviction. And I feel like that's what God wants to deal with right now in this moment. So if you would go ahead and lift your hands, hallelujah, on Zoom and on Facebook, if you would go ahead, close, just close your eyes. And I say, God, and I'm going to have you pray as well, Pastor Heather. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you right now mm -hmm. that you are doing surgical work mm -hmm, on, on, on overgrowths, mighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Ooh, I literally see like um, I forgot the way Antigans call it. What's it called? Because you can see it on my hand where I've had surgery. What's it called again? Um, that mark scar. that's left. A scar? Scar, yes. Yeah, scar is the word, but I thought there was another word. <laughs> but, yeah. um, so I'm going to put my hand so you see what I'm talking about. I have had surgery here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have a raised. Thank God oh, the surgeon who did, I had surgery a second time in 2017 and he was able to fix it a little bit. But sometimes people have like the raised flesh. Keloid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, there you go. There you go. And and I see I see where those are, are blocking the the reproductive process, the ability to even see clearly, conceive properly. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we in the name of that Jesus, you're doing surgical work, and you're going to places that are scarred, and the the scarring has not healed correctly. Mm -hmm. And so even when there might have been healing, there's, there's, a, there's a remaining flesh, there's an yeah, extra flesh that, that, that needs to be removed surgically. Mm -hmm. And so God, we say right now, go to places in our hearts, mm -hmm. in our spirits, in our minds, in our emotions mm -hmm. that have known trauma, that have known disappointment, that have known discouragement, that have known hope deferred. And I say, mm -hmm. God, let there mm -hmm. be a release of dynamic power mm -hmm. and divine fire that would remove mm -hmm. 
Remove. Mm. Remove. Mm. Remove every excess thing, Lord God. Remove every hindering thing now, Lord God. Yes. Heal, mm. heal my heart. Somebody just needs to say, God. Mm. Jesus, yes. Yes, yes. Jesus. Because the creativity is going to flow from a place of freedom and healing. And God, I just declare, even now where there's been a congestion, where there's been blockages, God, where there's a clutter, God, yeah, that no, you no, no, would decongest, you would declutter, Holy Spirit, that the channels and the pipelines for the flow of your presence and your glory through us will be open. We say, open, open, open up, open. The, gates. open up mm -hmm. the gates, open up the channels, open up, open up the pipelines, open up that the flow will be without friction, that the, pl the flow will be without distortion, that the flow will be without any inhibition. Yes. Father, we break that fear, that fear of failure, Oh, God is dealing with that on somebody right now. Holy Ghost, Amen. the fear of failure. In the name of Jesus. You have settled, because for you, the cost, the cost to your integrity, your personal integrity has been so severe when it comes to not fulfilling the project year after year that now you have mm. settled. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord would say to you, pick up your bed. You who have sat at the gate, you who have sat at the gate beautiful, you who have sat at the temple gate, not knowing you have the ability by the mercies of God to enter into his presence. God says today, 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 you would get up, you would leap, you would be healed from paralysis in Jesus name. Whatever has crippled you, God is dealing with it right now in Jesus mighty name. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 We receive we receive sight restored yes, mm. yes. in Jesus name, mm. in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Mm. I'm going to pray in a moment, but this comes to me, apostle, just as you prayed, Matthew 18, verse three, mm -hmm. Matthew 18, verse three. Yeah, we've got that. Yeah. So from, yeah. from the passion translation. Yes. Yes, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It says, learn this well, unless you dramatically change your way of thinking and become teachable like a little child, you will never be able to enter in. Mm. Mm. And mm. that's exactly the version that I wanted. Mm. 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 Unless you dramatically change your way of thinking. Mm and become like a child, mm. you will not enter the kingdom. In other words, you will not be able to experience the wealth of what the kingdom offers. Mm. And I believe this is a, a, a part of what we're dealing with, even with our site this evening, because when we were talking about this early apostle, that there is something inherent in children to mm -hmm. be imaginative, exactly. to be free with their imagination, to <laughs> just believe it's going to happen, yeah. right? And you were talking about your behaviors or your actions or your imagination as a child being predictive of your destiny, right? Mm -hmm. That you would be holding broomsticks and yeah. pretending you were teaching children or, or, or teaching people. Um, and I talked about my daughter being, having so many pictures of her as a child, holding a mic or in a position like, a, a somebody who was a star and some of you, and I believe many of us this afternoon have lost our ability to be like a child in that way, mm. to be imaginative, mm. to just believe. And I believe that's part of the healing that God even wants to affect in our midst, that he wants us to dramatically change in our way of thinking, to begin thinking again, like a mm. child. Yeah. To be playful, to believe that God really wants this for me, right? Mm. Uh, Minister Pope, you are welcome to jump in. I see that I see some wheels turning in your heart and your mind. Like a child, what does it mean for you 
to dramatically change your way of thinking and become like a child. To be restored in your imaginative capability. And you said something, Apostle, I believe that trauma can train us to not be imaginative anymore. Trauma trains. And so I believe that's even part of what God wants to do in our session this evening, that he wants to allow us by his Holy Spirit and by the work of grace and healing in our lives to mm -hmm. say, you know what, Sister Deborah, you know what, Sister Luana, mm -hmm. it's okay to be childlike. It's okay to imagine. Yeah. It's okay to reimagine mm -hmm. what your future could look like if you truly believe that what I have said mm -hmm. is coming to pass. Mm -hmm. oh, Amen. And Pastor Heather, that, that goes with healing as well. So like when I'm, I see myself, there's a saying I'm looking at, because I'm part of the Mind Cafe that you often hear me talk about. Some of you, it's the first time, but I've got um, a couple of slides from one of our sessions on visualization. And it says, see yourself delivered and set free, healed and healthy. So even when we're praying for that, how many of us, when we're praying, based on what we're learning tonight, are actually imagining and seeing that? Or was it, is it just words? Mm. And we're going to get to that with prayer because that's kind of the mm -hmm. crowning part of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yeah. And so that's a huge part of what it means, according to the passion, to dramatically change mm -hmm. our thinking. Mm -hmm. To return to that childlike imagination, that place mm -hmm. where we're able to visualize conceptualize mm -hmm. what God is saying. In other words, to see ourselves there, healed, yeah. prosperous, mm -hmm. whatever that thing is for you, published mm -hmm. minister Pope, published yeah. <laughs> actually seeing mm -hmm. the books on the table, the book signing. Yeah. What is it that you need to see again? what do you need to see sister helen sister arlene you know recently and this wasn't the first time but the word of the lord came to me out of a couple of voices about me pushing forward to pursue a doctorate and with purpose not because i want to but with purpose and so one of the things i did immediately I went to a store and I had a plaque made and um, it's a little too far for me to bring it, but on there, it says, Dr. Heather, clinical um, psychologist. Wow. And it's not because I think I'm all that in a bag of chips. It was very simply that I need something to visualize. I need an image of something that speaks of what God has already said and written in heaven. Do you get that? What God has said about you, what God has spoken over your life, if you come into agreement with your sight and with your words, which we'll touch next, it is as good as done. Yeah. So how do you need to, how do we need to come into agreement with what God has said by what we see, and in a moment, by what we say. So for me, when the going gets tough, when I don't think I have enough finances, when I'm too tired, when my schedule doesn't allow, I have something to look at, and I can say, God, you said such and such. Mm -hmm. This is what I have before me to remind me. This is my looking outside, going outside. And so I believe God wants to restore. He wants us to reclaim mm -hmm. imagination. He wants us to reclaim the power of visualization this evening. Each mm -hmm. one of us, what are you going to reimagine? Mm -hmm. Pastor no. Harry, can I jump in and say something quickly? Yes, yes please. please. You know, I'm looking at the flow that we are going in and how it's building. 
And, you know, we have so much references in the word of God that we can use to build line upon line and precept upon precept. You know, when we first started off, it, it took me to Jeremiah, where the Lord asked him, what do you see? Yes. There's so many different aspects of vision because he had to break it down for him. At one part, he saw the boiling part, another part, you know, then till he come to the almond tree that he saw was budding, you know, and as we talked about the children, it, it being childlike, having a child spirit to believe that and perceive what God said that we can see it before it actually manifests itself. It also took me to the scripture pastor brought this morning that the, the, the man who was blind from birth, you know, and we talk about, you know, um, having a childlike spirit. And now it brought me to the, to the point of blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus cried out. He said, Jesus, son of a David, you know, and even the people that was around him, we talk about being in company of people, you know, they, they wanted to stop him from receiving his sight, you know, and, he did not, and when Jesus came to him, he said, the cry that he cried out, it grabbed Jesus' attention. And he said something that's when it grabbed my attention. It was like, what are we crying out for? What are we seeing? What is, a, what are we? you know, internalizing. What is the, the vision that is in front of us that can cause us to cry out like blind Bartimaeus? And when Jesus heard that cry, it got into his spiritual loins. He said, he said, who is that person? I mean, he didn't say it like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And the, the, you know, the disciples tried to hush him up and Jesus said, bring him to me. And when they brought him, Jesus asked him, what do you want? Blind Bartimaeus didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for a house. He asks for his sight. Yes. And where you all are going today, it, 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 this, it just brings such enlightenment to me that we could be walking around physically seeing things, but mm. spiritually blind. Mm. You know, mm. we, we, and, as, and as Minister uh, Valentine prayed a while ago, sometimes it's trauma and, and past pains and hurt and things that happen to us as children growing up in, in relationships with spouses and family members and co-workers that has caused our vision to go dim. And we lose sight of what God has showed us. As he said, I've already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I am so thankful to be in this space at this point in time. Sight has bring a new understanding and enlightenment to me. You know, what are you seeing? What are you hoping for? God had to bring Abraham out of his circumstances of out of what he accustomed to, you know, the culture to show him, mm -hmm. you know, a kingdom perspective of where he wants to take him because it was all about nations, what God wanted to build, God wanted to restructure. So I, I'm so thankful for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. amen. Thank you. Thank you, amen. Minister Pope, I'm gonna ask you if you would pray into this moment. that God would restore the ability to imagine, to dream, that childlike part of us. And I like what you said, Sister Deborah, because environment again matters. And so this is a unique environment. This waiting room is a unique environment that gives us permission <laughs> to be childlike. Amen. Apostle started with, bring your crayons, bring your markers. How many prayer rooms talk about markers and crayons? We call that childishness, right? Yeah, yeah. But this is what God wants to restore to us because so many of us have lost the ability to dream. We have lost the ability to imagine and even reimagine post-difficulty. Post the hope deferred. It takes courage to get back up on that horse and say, no, 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 guess what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the page over and I'm going to draw a new picture. What God has said still stands. What I desire to see still matters. And so, Minister Pope, if you would, I want to ask you that you would pray over us this evening, pray over our audience, pray over our hearts that we would be healed, that we would be restored, that we would, I, I believe uh, there's been, for some of us, woundedness, 
in our childhood that many uh, may have heard words from, I can't say well-meaning, perhaps teachers, mm -hmm. perhaps mm -hmm. parents who weren't educated enough or weren't in that place enough who may have said things to us like, be quiet, you're talking too much. Yeah. And yet that was, that's the imprint of the image of God on you who were called to speak, to declare, to decree. Perhaps it was you who would come out dressed up in, in a shame with, with a pretend mic and, and, and wanting to show. And someone said, oh, y'all show off. Mm -hmm. But that was the image of God in you preparing you, mm. Mm. birthing, seeding you with an ability with a desire, with something that needed to carry you before audiences that were larger than what you grew up in. Perhaps it were you who heard that message in words. Hallelujah. Mm. Father, we give you praise today. We thank you, Lord, because you are still God. We thank you because you are a faithful God who keep promises. And Lord, even as we would have heard again today that we are so very unique and special because even as our faith is extended as children, Lord, you care for us. And the images that would have been in our minds, in our hearts and the dreams, oh God, that Hallelujah. That's good. Lord, we thank you. Yes, we thank God. you. We thank you for the washing right now that's happening. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the flow, the flow of grace that is healing places within each of us. Yes. We thank you, Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, you would have placed dreams and visions in our hearts, and mm -hmm. many have been crushed. Mm -hmm. Mm. Reawaken, reawaken, reawaken. Yes, Father, yes, Father. Lazarus, come forth. So Lazarus, come forth. We call dead things back to life this day. We say, come out of the grave and come out of the grave clothes in the name of Jesus. We call the souls from beneath the baggage. We call the souls from beneath the rubble. We call the souls that's hiding on your day of coronation to come forth in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Good Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word that tells us that we can dream again. We can hope again. Mm -hmm. And you will work it for our good again. Mm -hmm. So Lord, we thank you that you are putting the pieces together and yes. giving us the strength to bring forth. Lord, we come against procrastination. Mm -hmm. We come yeah. against the naysayers we come against mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. own blocks mm -hmm. that we have put up in our minds yeah that we can't do it yeah and lord we will be again taken outside and you will show us that yes. you've got greater things in store for us and so today lord we are marking today as a day of not only decision but a day of birthing will bring oh. us from what has been delayed, from what, yeah, been Rabbi, Rabbi, what you have destined for us. Mm -hmm. So we thank you that you bring us from the nine, from all those degrading times, oh God, when we would have put ourselves down. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we thank you that we will not walk in purpose. Mm -hmm. We will live our destiny mm -hmm. because you have shown us what great and mighty things you have been store for us. So we thank you today Amen. in Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's hallelujah. unmute for a moment and give the Lord thank praise for that. Jesus. Let's uh, yeah. so Pastor our Hendra, before we do that, that yes, sis, before we do that. So um, Minister Paul brought up Genesis 15 again just now, because before I, I, um, Mm. that scripture that we read, I read it actually, mm -hmm. Genesis 15 and five, the Lord took him outside. Jesus. Hallelujah. The confinement of 
of being in ourselves is part mm. of what God wants to free us from. So before so we go, good. my so God, good. God wants so to good. take me out of myself. Mm. My own limitations. My own limitations. My own my, yeah. my own, my own limitations, my, my own, own limitations. challenges, my own mm -hmm. issues. What, what, what issues? Is it procrastination? Mm -hmm. Is it, is it a poor view of, of how I see myself? Am I, do I have a grasshopper mentality? Mm -hmm. Oh God, have mercy. Mm -hmm. Do I lack, do I lack structure and systems in my life? Do I lack mm -hmm. accountability? Oh mm -hmm. spirit of the living God. What is it that you need to take me out of God? Mm -hmm. Is what environment do I need to leave? Mm. Mm. What orbit mm. is not conducive mm. to conception and to carrying full term a dream? Jesus. What in the environment has been causing spontaneous abortions? What in the environment has been perpetually causing miscarriages of dreams and visions? Oh God. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Take us outside of ourselves and take us outside of any, any environment that is working contrary to the the calling to the assignment that you have for us, Lord. You took literally Abraham out of Ur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some of us, Lord God, are unwilling to deal with the discomfort of the detachment. Some of us are willing to deal with the discomfort of the separation that we must make in order to be set apart. But today I ask that we would become more comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm. That we would recognize to give birth mm. is not a comfortable mm. position. Mm. 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 As one who's never given birth naturally, I do know, I do know, not from experience, but I do know from having been in the birthing room with others and from having looked at videos and watched others and just listened to mm. others and read books, I know it's not mm. comfortable. Mm. And some of us are so, in, in my country, we say you stush. You're too, you're too, you're too, you're too intact <laughs> with yourself. That, that the thing that needs to come out is being restricted because you need to come out of yourself. God, deliver me from me. You might want to pray like I am praying it. God, deliver me yeah, from me. Deliver me from the self sabotaging yeah, conversations deliver me from the internal dysfunction deliver me oh god from the distortion in my mind oh god deliver me deliver me deliver me from the voices of intimidation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. deliver me deliver us god deliver mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. take us deliver. out take us out Take us out. Somebody needs to say, God, take me mm. out. Take me out. Take me out. And cause me to now look up. Mm. Mm. My eyes have been in the wrong place. My gaze has been in the wrong place. Mm. But I look up now. I look up now. I look up now. I look up now. Yes, I look up now. I look up now, God. I look up. I look up. I've mm -hmm. been looking. In the wrong place, in the wrong direction. But I look up now I look to look behold now. what you are showing, to gaze mm. upon what you are showing me, showing Jesus. us. Yes, Jesus. Go on, sis. Go yes, on, Jesus. Go on, sis. Go I'm going to stay there. Take, Father, we agree. Take us out mm -hmm. and take out of us. Mm -hmm. But Father, for some of us, it's as though there are spiritual fibroids in our womb. Oh, wow. Wow. 
God, there are things inside of us that are choking, that are taking up the space that the baby my God. And so even now in the name of Jesus, yes, we speak to every invader in our spiritual wombs, in our mental wombs, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. That has been growing with the baby. Oh, Rama Satan, and even some sometimes fibroids and in, in physical wounds begin to choke the baby or begin to take space and take life from the child. But we deny access anymore to these invaders in our womb in Jesus' name. Yes, we curse you, we cut you off, we decimate you even now. Yes. yes. You spiritual fibroids. Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you for the DNC, Lord. Thank you for the DNC. Yes, yes. yes. in the name thank of you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the cleansing and the scraping that you're doing. Yeah, 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 God. Of that the lining of our uterus, our spiritual <inaudible> uterus, <inaudible> our spiritual loins, oh God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the healing, the internal <inaudible> healing, Jesus. Thank you for the healing. Hallelujah. And, and I want to say this as one who knows too well the need to have a commitment to a process because the waiting room may may just open things open places in you that you ask how, how, what do i do now we want you to know that you don't have to do this journey alone yeah there's a place called the well there's a place there's a physical place called the well here in Kissimmee, Florida, where the Lord has allowed me to invite others to come and experience healing, yeah. to be on a healing journey. Mm -hmm. You can be part of the well from wherever you are. Because mm -hmm. just as we are on Zoom right now and we're connecting, mm -hmm. that's how I'm connecting with others across the world. And so I want to invite you to reach out. I want to invite you to connect and invest in yourself yes. by coming to the well. And if you feel like the need to come here physically, find the way. When mm -hmm. I shared the vision of the well in 2017, a young lady that I'd never met from St. Martin inboxed me and said, I need to give myself this gift for my birthday, which was December 31st. And by the January, she flew here, paid her fare, paid to stay at the well, paid for my services. And her words were, no money is is, is too much mm. for what I've received at the well. Mm. You need to know, we don't want you to open up like this and be left wondering, what do I do next? Mm. I want to invite you mm. to journey mm. forward yeah. intentionally, mm -hmm. to journey forward mm. with a process and a yeah. commitment to that process, mm. to journey forward systematically with a structure with a system because we don't want you to just be stirred up yeah. i call it the onan spirit because in the bible onan was the man who was asked to marry his brother's a wife because his brother had died but he wanted never to conceive with her and so instead of allowing his seed to penetrate with her her egg he spilled his seed every time we don't want that. We want to have mm. conception. We want to have a, mm. something happening as a result of you experiencing what all of us are experiencing. I know for me, I am offering this, but I know I need to go somewhere. <laughs> and I have some thoughts already before tonight as mm. to what I need to do for me mm. so that I continue on this journey always. Also, because sometimes some of us think that, oh, maybe that person has all the answers. No, I, yeah. I need somebody at a higher level than me to pour into me. Mm. I need somebody who's advanced ahead of me to pour into me. And so I want to invite you to commit to a process, to reach out, to say, how can I help? And if it's not me, I can direct you to somebody else. 
or can help guide you, but you need to say, I will not just be stirred up tonight. I will not just be provoked tonight. I want to commit to a process. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching on Facebook, I'm going to invite you to jump on the Zoom as soon as we get off Facebook. And those of you who are on Zoom, I want you to stay on for a little bit because I want to share with some of you the more, more in depth of what mm -hmm. you can access so this mm -hmm. journey continues for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. What do you need to do? Where do you need to go mm. to engage in the process? Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Bless the Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Minister Greaves, I see your hand up. Yes, Raise. thank you. Thank you so much. It's just been so powerful. And um, what Apostle was saying now, it's triggered a thought. Um, as you, you'd spoken about somewhere along the line, we've spoken about blind Bartimaeus and others and so it's that faith with without works is dead so that believing and visualizing without the action that goes with it is exactly what we're talking about now so when we apply I'm going to take a degree or a master's we don't just go and pay our fee and then go home and wait for three years and then get the certificate in the post so we have seen ahead of time that the end result will be this degree or this master's and so we do the work that's what the apostle is saying now. We're going to do the work, follow the course, the assignments, and everything that leads you to that. And I think sometimes in our prayer life, maybe just the culture of some of the churches and ministry of what, you know, where we are, it might come across that, you know, pray and believe, believe and you shall receive. But this is, we're getting it here. And that's what we, we need to share. So the people that heard them speaking after the day of Pentecost, they were there for Pentecost and they heard the message, they heard the words in the language that they could understand. I was like, oh, that was, that was interesting, wasn't it? Yeah, great meeting and gone. No, they went back to all the, the list of countries that were named, they were going back home. And so they would, would be taking the good news, they would be taking the gospel to where they're going to that activity, that action, the activation is such a necessary essential part of um, what we're understanding needs to be done now um, that we've heard and we've learned. And um, can I say, um, I was saying that apparently the brain, scientifically the brain, responds to what you imagine as if it was real. Mm. And it, we must always remember that fact. So scientifically it's proven that the brain responds to what you imagine is real. Wow. And so we want our body, our brain, everything to line up with the truth of what we're visualizing, what God has said about us. And we kind of had audacity to undermine what God has said. I, he has placed himself within us and he has made us creative. And he, the, the, Jesus himself said, greater works than these shall we do. And so for us to actually downplay and change those words and change those confessions and change those facts, it's quite an audacious thing to do. And so, yeah, we really do need to fix up and come in line with what the creator is the one who's decided and how dare we tell the creator that we actually know better. So we're doing ourselves a disservice by not accepting Amen. his truth about us. Amen. Amen. And I so have my good. Let's see that picture. Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> is it all there? Uh, yes. Oh, my it's goodness. Right there, I right love there. That. Stay, stay, stay. Mm -hmm. Wait, let me do print screen. Prosperity seeing is, is mine. Believing. Seeing is believing. I am love. Oh, God. Only oh my God. creative friend. Oh, my gosh. Only my oh super God. creative friend. That's right. Super. I am creative, but you're super, 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 super. creative. Oh, Jesus. Oh, and is that a musical mm -hmm. note? Is that the air looks like a musical note here? Or is yeah, that the imagining? Really oh, I saw good. that. Yeah. Oh, oh. Molly. No, no, no. You have, you have visualized that. It was the G, but it was kind of hanging. So then I raised it and I left it like an earring. But you've seen a musical note. Wow. I am seeing a musical note. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how when we go to the gallery and we look at art, people, read, they read what they, they say, what they see. So they say what they see. Yeah. So thank you. That's an addition. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Sis. Thank you for sharing that. Ooh. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Please send that to me so I can share it with you know on the on the on my Facebook page and in the, we can share it on the chat as well. Wow. Has anyone oh. else changed? Anybody else done anything? <laughs> we're so encouraging you to do that. I know it's difficult because we're really. Oh, there's so much to gain, I know. <laughs> and yeah. and just just make a disclaimer, please. We're not trying to say, because this is not a competition. We're not trying to uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we need to be clear about that, okay? Because listen, listen. After you, after you, it's like, okay, I'll keep my no. paper down. Yeah. <laughs> I will be very disobedient. I am not showing mine, but I did draw. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see what you draw. Okay, when we come on Facebook, promise us when we come on Facebook. Okay. And everybody, you can, when we go from here, there's time, just go and just write or draw whatever you saw, what you see, and then we can share it in our gallery as we go throughout. Yes, please. Well, I know our, our time, I mean, I, I can't, our, our time is not yes, spent. Yes, our yes. time has moved but this has been so rich. I want to oh, so probably take two minutes there because Minister Molly, you kind of segued. The brain sees it as though it were real. Mm -hmm. um, I want to, and I want to end with just a seed. I put the scriptures in the chat, but with we talked about sight, and I believe that's the way God wanted us to spend most of the time. But seeing and saying, right? Mm -hmm. Seeing and saying the saying part. And so it's the same thing with the brain, that the brain does not know when you are joking, when you mm. say certain things like, wow, oh, my head is killing me. Wow. Oh. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's exactly the brain doesn't know that you're joking. And so um, our mind, our bodies begin to go in the direction of our dominant thought and our thought mm. is determined by our thoughts then fuel into what we say. And so as we go, we don't even have the time to unwrap this, but I want you to take these passages down. Genesis 11, verse six. Genesis 11, six talks about the Tower of Babel and in the Amplified, it says very clearly, God confused their language. Why? He says, now nothing they have imagined mm. they wow. can do will be impossible for them. You see, it's right in the scripture, right? Yeah. Nothing yeah. they imagine mm -hmm. will be impossible for them to do. And so he confused their language. And here is what mm -hmm. I want to drop from that scripture for us. Confused speech stopped their progress. Wow. Mm. Confused right. speech stopped their progress. Progress. That's right. mm -hmm. And so that's a caution for us this evening. Mm -hmm. What are we saying? We're talking about what are you seeing or not seeing, but what are you saying? So maybe you are visualizing. Maybe you will begin to visualize. Maybe you'll have a picture. Maybe you will draw. Maybe you'll have something. You are coming outside. We're doing the work. But now we have to engage what we're saying wow. so that there is no confusion Thank between... You what we're saying and what we want to see. Mm -hmm. And so I want us to notice that from Genesis. And so what's the antidote for that? Mark 11, 23 and 24 says, and we know this passage, truly I tell you, if anyone says to this, again, says to this mountain, go mm -hmm. throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what they say will mm -hmm. happen it will be done verse mm -hmm. 24 therefore i tell you whatever you ask for in prayer now do we see the mm -hmm. connection yeah. so what we are saying in prayer what we are saying based on what we're visualizing and what we are decreeing with our mouths in general conversation mm -hmm. wow is it confused speech that's stopping our progress wow Mm -hmm. What are you saying? What have you said and what you are saying? Because the supernatural starts, what did we say? With what we see and with what we say. John 5, 19, Jesus said, I only say what my father says. And so when we confess, now sometimes when we say confession, it means we're saying what God says. But you know, whatever we say with these lips, 
because we have been created in the image of God, we are creating with our words, whatever we're saying. So in other yeah. words, whatever you're saying about what you're saying is a confession. So mm. what <laughs> are you confessing? Are you saying the same thing that God is saying about what he has promised, about what he has put in you, about what you're visualizing? Or let's go back to Genesis 11. Is your speech confused? Mm. Wow. And so is oh, our yes. house, has our speech mm. become confused by our mm. own saying? Mm. Have we stopped our own progress mm. by what we have been saying? Mm. I've come. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Since as you spoke, I also felt strongly that there are people who practice confession or affirmations, they engage in that. But if internally, I don't believe what I'm saying, I've got to believe what I'm saying. Yeah. I've got to be in agreement with what I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to say the right thing. I've got to believe there has to be an alignment of my heart and my head and my mouth <laughs> wow yeah jesus help lord help before sister closes our time out i want to remind you that the waiting room continues tomorrow morning at 6 a.m eastern time we will gather on zoom we will not go live on facebook but mm -hmm. you are encouraged to at least have your profile picture up and your full names. And for those of you who are, are willing, we invite you to be visual. Mm -hmm. um, that's tomorrow at six. Then at noon, Sister Luana is going to um, share with us how her passion for seeing God's beauty um, has allowed her to put a camera in her hand and just take pictures that are now blessing others. Bless me. And I know mm -hmm. blessing others. So you don't want to miss that on at noon tomorrow. And then tomorrow evening, Minister Molly will be with us at 6 p.m. And we are going to um, talk about how to make room for more, right? How to be more fruitful, how to deal with any weeds that could be preventing our seeds from growing and sprouting and blooming. Every session is so <laughs> rich and nourishing. I am glad that if you cannot, you just cannot watch it. These sessions are being, um, they're going live on Facebook, which means that there's a video. And immediately what I am doing, I am uploading them, downloading them first and then uploading them to my YouTube channel. Please go to Sandra Valentine Ministries on YouTube. Subscribe, click the bell so you know when a new video is uploaded and it, it's easy to share. You know, yeah. one person, I, my spiritual son in Trinidad, Alex Hercules, I, I've been sending him the videos and he says, oh, I'm so sorry, I can't join. But he said, keep the videos coming because they're blessing me. And I was mm -hmm. grateful for his response because the others I'm sending it to and I haven't heard whether I'm annoying <laughs> them by sending them or, <laughs> or they're grateful for them coming. So at least I know one person who said, keep them coming, keep them coming. So send the videos out, share with others, go back to the previous videos, because some may be like in the middle here, what, 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 what waiting room? They may need to get the video from, from last Wednesday about what is the waiting room from the launch. So they may get, you know, good understanding of what is happening. Listen, we are going all the way to Sunday where we climax with a, a unity service at Kingdom Life Center, where I am the senior leader, and it's going to be a wonderful gathering. If you want to fly here, feel free. Um, <laughs> not too late to book a flight, but you definitely, if you're far away, can watch on Facebook, because that's how you're going to be able to participate. Back to you, sis, as we seek to bring the curtains down. Father... We are so grateful Yes. Mm -hmm. that you care so much about us. Thank you, Jesus. That you want what you have said about us to become our reality, that you have 
made space for us in this birthing room. Thank you, Jesus. We say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for every moment of provocation. Mm. We thank you for every word of healing. We thank you for every expression of your divine creativity to us and through us. And so, Father, we make room for more. We make room for more. Father, and we commission our hearts, we commission our minds, we commission every hearer who is present and who will hear to make good on what you have given to us, Father. We decree in the name of Jesus that we will not be the same. We will not do the same. We will not operate the same. We call into alignment our thoughts, our words, Oh God, in our self-image mm. in the name of Jesus. In your we name arrest Jesus. every part of who we are so that all that you have said will come to full fruition in its time. And mm. so we bless your people. We thank you for causing your word to continue to percolate in our spirits. Father, causing us to be nourished, to be strengthened, so that everything that you have said will come to pass. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Oh, thank you, God. Say, thank you. Amen and amen. God bless you. you. Those of you who are watching on Facebook, thank you for joining. Please like the video before you depart. Please leave a comment before you go. And again, share it. And we look forward to you joining us again in the waiting room. If you mm. want to jump on the, the, the Zoom for a little bit, oh, bless you, Bethany. You've been watching, huh? Uh, that's my sister's bestie. Um, <laughs> um, feel free to jump on Zoom for a little bit if you want to. And those of you who are on here, feel free to linger just a little bit if you can um, as we talk a little bit more on how we can move forward. Um, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.